So today on the bench we've got this power supply. Now this is a piece of industrial equipment out of an old machine. I was able to obtain this when it failed. It will produce output but it dies, overheats and stuff like that or something, I don't know, but it's unreliable. It will work for a short period of time and then die. It could be a thermal issue, it could be something else, it could be some kind of internal overload which is building up from heat. But when I got given this thing it had been dismantled by the electricians and there's lots of pieces so I managed to rebuild it back together for all the bits. I think all the bits were there. So we can take it apart again and have that fun. But this is a 24 volt, 25 amp power supply, so 700 watts and like that. If you want to do the maths on that, go for it. <laughs> it's fairly junky. Like I said, I did have it in bits when I could give them to me, so I put it back together. But it's like a month ago, I've actually forgotten what it even looks like now, so let's get it apart. Actually, I think this is a job for a electric screwdriver. So here's the casing off it, or the bulk of the casing off it. Yeah, I think I might leave the chassis on it actually. Keep it more stable. So bending the circuit ball all the time. I think I can access everything okay as it is. Let's do that. Probably a few less screws I need to take out. We've got some capacitors in there, obviously. But the real question is is it going to be a capacitor? Well, let's have a look around. That's not looking bulged, that's not looking bulged. Those look kind of okay. Maybe a little bit. Could be slight bulging. This one looks slightly different to this one, for example. Maybe. Hard to tell. So there's not really capacitors in here, there's a couple on this riser board here. So if there were capacitor issues, it was not much to change. And there's a couple underneath there as well. So it does seem to be thermal related. Because the way it'd be working, then it would cut out. After a period of time, it could be a connection issue, it could be solder joints, it could be the fan's dead, it could be the fan. So it could also be that the thermal issue is caused by the fan. I mean, it is spinning, but it doesn't feel right. It's sort of binding up in spots, like there's binding a little bit. It just doesn't feel like it's really spinning, like it's a bit worn. So it could be the fan is actually what's wrong with it, and it could be the rest of it is absolutely fine. But what is that fan? Let's take the fan now, so look. We'll try powering it up so it ends. Oh, by the way. It's a bit dirty. Uh, 12 volt fan. Okay, we'll power this up and see what happens. See if it's a fan issue. Let's plug these leads in. The advantage of having these little probes like this, you can shove them into these little connectors. Right, that's in. Turn the power on. I mean, it's going, but it seems extremely weak. That's like. It's gradually getting faster. And now it's getting slower again. And now it's getting faster again. Can you hear it? I don't know if you get here or not, but it's ramping up and down. So this is rated at 170 milliamps. I'm going to smell something from it too. It's only drawing about 130 to 145 or something. It's varying as well. Current was blow spec. But yeah, I think this fan could be the cause of the issue. I've probably got another one. Now like any YouTuber, I've got fans. DC fans. So there's the details of an existing fan, in case it interests you. And this one I'm going to be putting in instead is this one, which is somewhat different. Airflow is definitely less but um, it's what I've got and it's quiet, it's really quiet this one, it's a nice fan. I've salvaged that from something, I don't know what I've salvaged it from. But ideally I'll put the right fan in, I haven't got the right fan and I'm not going to bother getting one for this. Well typically, me being me, now I know 90 more fans are a thing I don't have, I will probably end up buying some but not in time to fix this. So I thought I'd pull the label back and yeah it's full of rust in there. That could be why it's not very happy. 
it does have a circle clip in there and I'll clean the rust out. So I'm actually going to try popping the blades off and see if I can get into it. Um, I don't actually have proper circlip tools though, so we'll see what happens. It could just go flying. Yeah, I'll record video after I've got it off. It's less entertaining that way. That's what the inside looks like. Typical brushless thing. But you can see the rust down inside that side as well. I mean, I don't know, maybe it's salvageable. Here's the bearing. Came out easy. It actually feels alright. It actually feels okay. That was rumbling a bit when I was doing it by hand with the actual blades, but no, it feels okay. It's not a bearing here, maybe it's the other one. Could be that bearing. Oh, that one's, oh yes, that bearing there. This one's the problem. Pretty sure it's not meant to do that. Yeah. That's not quite right, is it? That bearing's gone. So I managed to slide that bearing off that shaft and there's a little spring that sits underneath it. It's a tiny little spring. Put it back on before I lose it. So yeah, this bearing here, yeah, it also feels rough. So it's got one bad bearing, one which is um, definitely shot. The fact it had all that wobble on the shaft means it's definitely bad. Um, let's just fit this on the shaft and see if this one wobbles as well. Got a tiny little bit in there. Tiny little bit of wobble in it. Not much. So that is definitely worn as well. So if you really wanted to, you could swap these two bearings out and put new ones in and have effectively a new fan. I haven't got any bearings. So I've been talking to try to take the bearings out of this other fan which I've got sitting here, which is a good fan. See if I can try and get these little circle clips out. So is it the same bearing? It's got a washer on the top of it, the other one didn't have that. So it looks very similar. So it looks promising. Actually I think that might work. So this construction is this, it's got a spring that goes on top of that. And it's got a washer on top of that bearing as well. So unless you've got washers in it, it's like this one's got better construction. Let's try and slide this bearing out. There we go. Let's just rebuild this fan. I'm going to give it a clean first before I rebuild it. Let's take the spring off before I lose it. And I'll come right back. So I've given both of these housings a bit of a clean up, well this one could actually use some more. So we've got a spring that goes in first. We get one of these salvage bearings from the other motor. The other fan, let's just check it. If it was good, we'll drop it in. Yeah, that fits beautifully. That's exactly right. Now I'm going to put a bit of oil on that, a little drop of oil. A drop, I mean, okay, it's probably going to be half a can. Yeah, this is going to go everywhere. <laughs> yeah, that's not too bad. I might just put some on that one as well. Tiny little bit, as it'll work its way in. Alright, so let's put this on top. That should go in. Let's drop in the other bearing. Just to straighten these up so I can get them back on. And close it back up again. And hopefully, I can pop it back on without too much hassle. Right, we'll give that a go. This one goes ping and disappears. Do need to put something underneath here to hold the blades up. How appropriate. And you guys can't see a damn thing I'm doing because my hands are in the way. It's okay, it makes two of us. Okay, I think that's on. That's on. Let's try it out. That's definitely spinning a lot better now. Much, much better. Well, I've got to hook up the power supply. We'll try this out and see if it falls apart or if it's dead. <laughs> Well, the current's actually dropped about 15 milliamps as well. Interesting. Well, it's working all right. And its output's definitely increased as well. It's definitely going faster. Yep, yeah, I think that's all good. Happy with that. I'll put this back in. So when this power supply was replaced, I was looking at them because I was trying to find ones which may be useful in case I had trouble finding a suitable power supply. It was about $500 to replace this power supply. So that's kind of what it's worth, it's 500 bucks. Obviously new, 
used is going to be you know, less than that, but uh, that's quite a cost. Pretty chunky power supply, right? Obviously, the next thing I want to do is replace these caps. Always need to replace caps because it's always a capacitor. And I'm going to have to desolder this board. I need to get that board out to take the ones off that subboard, which are the little riser card, which is in there, the little riser one, because it's got a couple of caps on there that need to come out. So I can't get to them without taking that board out, unfortunately. But there's four on the main board I can see down there. There are maybe some others tucked around. That's the only ones I can see, which I'll replace. I'm not going to worry about all these big ones. They're probably fine. Although I could check them. Oh, I'll do the smaller ones. The smaller ones are always the ones that give trouble. Always. I'm going to find these caps first. I'm going to replace the smaller caps on this board first, and I'll take the riser card out after that. So I've replaced the four capacitors on the main board now. And now I'm going to take out that little riser board, which is in there, the edge board, which has got these connections. Was it? 14 connections, something like that, maybe. Put some fresh solder on those pins, now I'm going to desolder them, take that board out and replace those two caps. So when you've got desoldering, which is a bit stubborn like these ones are being, a little trick you can do is, you can get these little pins like this, which are basically hollow tubes, see that? And you get them a set, different sizes. And what they allows you to do, is you can heat the joint up, and you can actually slide this over the pin. So you can get a pin like, say, I don't know, let's go to this one here, we'll slide over that one. So you heat that one up, and put it over the pin, and then you should be able to push this through the hole and that then breaks the solder contact and then you can slide it back out again. Um, you've got to get the one which is the closest fit as possible to the pin so you can get it through the hole. Hopefully this will be going through the hole. So I'll try it and see if it will work. It may or may not work. I might get lucky, it may not. But we'll try it. Solder has melted but that is not going through the hole. Hole's too small. No, it's not going through the hole. Hole's too small for this one, that's a shame. These ones don't work in this case. But sometimes they do work, because these are square pins for headers, so they're a bit bigger than normal. In this case it won't work. Oh well, we'll keep playing around. So finally got the board out, that was a bit of a mission, and so we've got two capacitors on them to take out. And we've got some glue, which I need to kind of finish peeling off. What we got here anyway, it's like the same brand again. Sam Young. So it's 50 volt, 33, 3.3 microfarad, not 33, bit of a difference. <laughs> and a 10 micro 50 volt. You don't actually have temperature ratings on them, interestingly. There's no rating for temperatures on there. So I need a 3.3 and a 10. Let's get those. Well, I've taken that cap out already. I've put the new one in. It's going to take this one out. So the first one was a 10 microfarad, this one's a 3.3, both 50 volt rated. <laughs> Come on, glue's in the way. Trying to straighten the pin up at the same time. If I can, this one's going to be awkward because I'm recording now. Mm. It's blocking, hold on. Of course, now recording is, you know, it's going to be cleaning because, you know, that's what it does. Because mm. of that glue being there. Mm. The first one desoldered beautifully, this one's being a pain. Because <laughs> it's got a ground plane on it. There we go. Alright, got that one out, so it's all cleaned out. New ones installed. Got soldered them in. Got the ground plane here, which is always going to be a pain. Could get soaked through because it's double sided ground plane, so I'll soak it through the board. Don't like to put too much heat on the capacitor for too long because it's not a good thing for them. But sometimes you need to because you've got to get the heat through. I'm just going to reinstall the board, I've put some flux on it already, cleaned up the connections and stuff like that. Just so it's all nice and fresh and clean, ready to go. So now I should be able to get the board lined up, hopefully, and drop the pins through. That's one side, that's the other side. Great. That's in place. Let's solder it. We'll tack a couple of pins in and I'll flip it over. Hardest part of this is soldering it without blocking the camera. <laughs> Turn around some more. There we go, middle pin's done. Next pin. Ground plane. More ground plane.
One last go over. Clean up. Also, I'll clean up the other capacitors and stuff I did as well. That's probably good enough. Check for shorts. So, I think I can put this back together again. Oh, my God, I haven't checked these other caps yet. I haven't checked these big ones. I'll check these caps and see what those look like. Because that's you know, only these two big ones here and those ones I haven't done. This has measured those. Now, someone watched one of my videos and emailed me the plans for the stand for this. I've forgotten whose name it was now. Was it Ray? It may have been. Yes, yeah, someone emailed me those. I was again, okay, cool, yeah, that's, that's helpful. <laughs> now, these are all in parallel, so I'm not quite sure what I'm going to get. 0.21, 17,000 microfarad, 0.21, and they're all in parallel together. Yeah, all six in parallel there, and these are probably the same. They're certainly in parallel together. Um, point two six seven hundred. Yeah, so we got all eight caps here in parallel together. Point two six ohms, eight parallel caps. Maybe it should be lower. Still seems reasonable, but seventeen thousand. Let's see what we get as far as if we can see values on those caps. Let's see thirty five volt. 2200, there we go. So if we've got eight of those, that's 16, 1760. So 17,600. So we've actually got 100 microfarad more than the rating. So those don't sound too bad, do they? But the fact the fan was definitely bad, that could have been all it was. I mean, this would have been loaded up quite heavily. No, these caps were a bit dodgy. There was a couple there which were quite bad, and the others were moderately all right. Maybe starting to go. So I'm fairly confident that it was a mostly heat and those caps being a bit marginal and also those other ones which are quite bad. Let's just have a little look here on this edge of the board. It's a bit dusty here. Let's check the corrosion. It's right by the fan. So the fan could be sucking in God knows what and maybe shorting stuff out too. Definitely a bit of... Uh, Yeah, issue with the joints not being particularly shiny there. No, oh, the need to looking okay though. Give me a bit of scratch here, right? It's mostly just debris, I think. Yeah. This one's looking worst. Just junk. Now there's some corrosion on the track as well. Solder mask is lifting off that one. So there's a little bit going on there. Right, so here, I was just sort of cleaning up around here with the brush and stuff, and I could see a bit of junk and I was scratching this track here and the solder mask was just falling off. So there's some corrosion underneath the solder mask on this track here. So I might just give this a scratch back and tin it. The track seems intact. Sometimes it can be hard to tell. The fact the solder mask was falling off means it's got corrosion underneath it and it was looking a bit yucky. So that's exactly what I'll do is I'll give that a bit of a clean up there and Put some solder over it. I'm going to use the heavy flux one. There you go. Now the track is protected. Get a bit of a clean. Yes, I could get a cotton bud out, but I've got this sitting here, so I'm going to use this. Here we go. Um, the rest of it is looking pretty dirty, you know. Just general grime, but I think it's okay. There seem to be that one spot from what I can see. 
So I've put it back together again. I've put a cable on. I'm just about to power it up, but first we need to make sure it's going to be safe. So I've got the cable hooked up. It's going to go there to the casing here. And you can see you've got 0.2 ohms there. So that's basically lead resistance off the meter. 0.2 ohms. No issues of grounding. And I've checked for shorts between the phase of neutral and earth. There's nothing there on that one. And on this one. Nothing there. So we're looking pretty safe to plug it in. Right, let's power this thing up. It's either going to go bang, it's going to be a big ball of flames, or nothing's going to happen. Or it could work, of course. That's also the very remote possibility that could actually work. Now, I don't have any loading. I've only got the multimeter on the end. It may want loads. Sometimes switch my power supplies like a load on the output, or require a load on the output, I should say. So we'll see what happens. We'll give it a try. And... Hold on. Um, what am I forgetting? Oh, safety squints. I've got, I've got my safety squints on. Oh, look at that, 24 volts. It's drawing 11 watts from the power supply. 11 watts is going in. So it's 0.12 amps going in at 230 volts. So, as you can see over here, hopefully. And it's bang on 24 volts. That's promising. Let's put this on electronic load and see what happens. So I've got it hooked up to the electronic load, not powered up yet. Well, it's powered up, but not activated yet. Let's turn the power back on again. Now I'm going to check AC ripple on the outputs with no load. Basically nothing. It's normal to see this drop down to like one millivolt or something like that on this meter. It's fine. There's nothing there, basically. All right. So let's get this electronic load set up. Let's just do one amp start with, right? Just nice and low, nice gentle start. And we'll monitor these at the same time. Check the ripple. So one amp, no worries at all, no loading. That's just doing 24 watts, so almost no stress on it. Okay, let's wind this up a bit. Five amps, so that's 120 watts. Ripple's still good. 10 amps, so that's 240 watts. Ripple's still good. 12 amps is as high I can go on this. At this voltage, that's 280 watts, or 287 watts, is showing up on here. And it still ripples fine. So that's like half the capacity of what this is rated for. And there's no signs of issues. And I do voltage. It's dropped marginally. Almost nothing. If I drop the current back down again, let's go down and say 5 amps or something. 1 amp, yeah. It's got a tiny little bit of drop there. Once you get above 3 amps, it seems to be pretty much that's the voltage it sits at so that's fine it's working alright so there you go there's electronic load running that it's been running for a little while now nothing seems to be playing up it all seems to be behaving nicely and I can wind the current up this is not a 200 watt load anymore it's a 300 watt load so I can actually wind up to about 12 maybe go 12 and a half if we want to really push it 12 and a half it's like maxed out as much as I can really do on this so 300 watts and it's working fine. Voltage sag is, you know, through connections and cables. And I can double check the ripple on the supply just to be absolutely sure with this loading it's all good. And we're getting basically nothing there. So less than 2 millivolts. Yeah, I'm happy with that. That seems to be working just fine. I'm going to leave it running for a little while. I'm not going to have it cranked right up though because I don't want to overload my load. Because it used to be a 200 watt load and it's now a 300 watt load. So I don't mind doing 300 watts for a short time, but not for a long time. It might be fine, but. I like to work things to the limits. I like to have a big operating window where you don't stress things too much. If you don't stress them, it lasts much longer. I don't know replace this thing. Well, that's been running now for I don't know, maybe 10 minutes on load, maybe. And I'm just put the current up a bit higher now. It's now on 10 amps, so it's still like 240 watts. You know, it's just under its half as rating. Seems to be handling it just fine. Heat and out the side, at the back here from the fan. No discernible heat. I can't feel any heat coming out of it. So it's not like it's really struggling or anything. It seems to be running easily and just fine. Now, obviously, to know if this is truly fixed, it needs to be warmed up a lot and actually left running for quite some time. Because this was originally faulting when it's under load. And not straight away. It'd run for a little bit, then it would die. Probably, it started being probably an hour under load. And then it got down to like five minutes under load. And then, then it died. It deteriorated quite quickly. I'm fairly sure that this is okay because when it's actually being used as well 
Yes, it's under load, but I don't think it'd be fully loaded. I think it's probably uh, got a bit headroom as well. It wouldn't be maxed out. So it may even be similar loading to what I'm putting on it right now. It's possible. I don't actually know what the, the system loading is on this when it's installed. I mean, D-ratings for temperature. 50 degrees C, 100% D-rating. Or does that mean no D-rating? <laughs> Surely 100% D-rating means it can't take any current. It wouldn't be a 0% D-rating in 50 degrees C and a 30% D-rating. A 71, wouldn't it be? How do you interpret that? Yeah, anyway, never mind. Yeah, it's working, it's probably fixed. Time will tell. It's looking promising, though. No?